Good day everyone. I was at the ReStore a couple of days ago and I scored this for five dollars. This is a Memorex model MVR-4046 4 head stereo VHS VCR from 1998. As you guys know for quite a while now I've been wanting a 4 head stereo VCR. You may remember the tragedy uh, last summer when I found a Panasonic 4 head stereo VCR from 2003 I think for three dollars at a yard sale and it had a problem loading the cassette it would get stuck when the cassette was like halfway down into the system and in trying to fix it I completely destroyed the VCR it absolutely would not work anymore it wouldn't even turn on and uh, I think now what happened was I rotated a rotary encoder and so it fell uh, it became misaligned with the rest of the VCR mechanism and so the whole thing was completely useless but uh, yeah, I saw this thing for five bucks and it's like, heck, I'll try it. Maybe uh, maybe I'll be a bit more lucky this time. Well, I'm pleased to report that uh, this VCR works absolutely perfect. I've used it quite a bit before making this video. I can't find anything wrong with it. So that's awesome. Um, it didn't come with a remote, which is unfortunate because you need the remote to do most of the functions, including setting the clock, which you can see... I am unable to do here but uh yeah I've been using this thing and it works just fine so let's take a look at it here so this VCR was actually made by Funai which uh, is fine by me Funai VCRs of this um, of this era were very durable and uh, that's certainly the case with my 2000 Citizen VCR which was also made by Funai that's a two head mono unit and right there you can see my 1988 uh, Hitachi made RCA which is also a two head mono unit I've been wanting a four head stereo and uh, I think I finally found one I think I finally found one that works good and is worth keeping and uh, everything so that's awesome so and uh, of course because this was made by Funai it was sold under several brand names the ones I know about were Memorex Brock, Sonic, and Orion. And I do know that that VCR was also sold under the Orion and Brock Sonic uh, brand names. So this was made in Thailand as uh, Funai VCRs of this era were. But, uh, you know, nothing wrong with it. Um, is it, you know, is it a heavily, solidly built machine? No, there are VCRs probably even of this era that were more solidly built and higher end and, you know, made of more high grade components, but, uh, heck, you know, it works just fine. And because, you know, this thing's from 1998, it's quite modern. Uh, the internal uh, mechanism is quite simple, and that's why these were so durable, and, uh, it works. So, no matter to me, it has a cable tuner 181 channel and a real-time tape counter you can see here the display it's actually a vacuum fluorescent display which is nice it's yellow in color a filter over it I presume but, uh, we can take a look there and you can see there are a few indicators there and you've got one uh, composite input here forehead hi-fi stereo Digital auto tracking, quick start, full loading system. I'm not a fan of the quick start, full loading system. The Citizen there is the same way. What that means is when you stick in a cassette, it wraps the tape around the head before you even start playing. So that when you do start playing, it starts playing immediately. And that's all fine and dandy, but... The reason I don't like it is because the tape remains wrapped around the head even when you're not. Uh, playing a tape and of course that introduces some very minor wear on the tape. I prefer just a regular system like uh, that uh, high tat or uh, that RCA there. When you stick in a tape it doesn't load it around the head until you actually press play and then when you press stop it removes it from the head. And uh, that means of course when you rewind or fast forward the tape 
it actually keeps it still keeps the tape wrapped around the head even when you're rewinding or fast forwarding so the tapes moving at high speed through all the components of the tape transport mechanism I don't like that but uh, you know there's nothing gravely wrong with it and we have our controls here recording uh, stop play rewind uh, slash review and fast forward slash Q and power and channel buttons Take a look around the back there's the information 17 watt this was a Canadian market VCR Memcorp Canada was the distributor there's the MVR 4046 made in Thailand as Funai VCRs of this era were and we can switch between TV or cable TV for the uh, onboard tuner or channel 3 or 4 for the uh, coax output we have another composite input and a composite output and the cable input and television coax output very good this is plastic standard uh, standard well not even funai standard vcr fare pretty much for all vcrs of this era this was made pretty much near the end of when VCRs were still really solidly built. This was pretty much one of the last ones. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to show. Funny thing, when I got this thing home and I tried it for the first time, I went to stick in a tape and when the tape, I, uh, I had the tape about this far in, you know, the point where it should grab it and start sucking it in. And rather than uh, intaking the tape, it just made a loud whining noise and I thought, well, crap, you know, <laughs> figures you know something had to be be wrong with it and so I opened it up and I saw that it was a really simple mechanism where the uh, tape transport is uh, you know bolted right on top of the circuit board and I figured then that it was curtains because you know with those tape transport mechanisms I don't know if I don't know if the tape transport itself has any belt or not, but if it is, it's on the bottom of the transport, so between the circuit board and the mechanism itself, like that Panasonic I had, because I I killed it trying to access that belt to see if it was loose. So uh, you know, I thought, well, shoot, you know, if that belt is uh, loose, I'll have to re remove the transport from the circuit board and that opens a whole can of worms because I could do the same thing to this like I did to that Panasonic. Well luckily that wasn't the case, we'll open this VCR later, but what it was is uh, in addition to the tape transport motor, which might or might not actually be belt based, I hope it's not, but at least if it is, at least it's still working right now, but uh, on top of the circuit board there's a smaller motor and that motor handles the loading of the cassette and the loading of the tape around the head drum. And uh, that little motor had a belt that goes around another wheel. And that belt was slipping. Well, it turns out the wheel that it was wrapped around, you know, basically the whole mechanism. This VCR probably sat for years and the whole mechanism was just kind of stuck a little bit. So I just rotated it by hand and uh, that freed it up it works just fine the belt doesn't slip anymore and uh, this thing works perfect so cool so uh, I've got this Polaroid Super Color six hour cassette one of many VHS cassettes I have and uh, well we can turn it on here it's kinda cool the display uh, when it's turned off the display runs at a reduced brightness so there it's turned off and now it's turned on and it gets brighter and, uh, we can push in the cassette and it's wrapping the tape around the head and I don't believe it's playing it shouldn't be yeah and uh, it's all ready to go it's got a counter right on the display which I love this thing also has an on-screen display and that's how you program it and everything it's you know an on-screen menu comes up Funai standard for this era and uh, it's indicating an SP uh, recording speed unfortunately I cannot switch the speed um, I need the remote to do that so we will not be able to do a recording demonstration for LP or SLP I don't even know if this has LP speed but uh, yeah we can press play and oh yeah it shows up the uh, on the display there 
that blinking indicator ATR that's the uh, automatic tracking it blinks when it's trying to find uh, a good tracking spot and then it remains steady when it has locked on unlike that Panasonic I had which was also hi-fi stereo um, when it played a tape when that VCR played a tape that had hi-fi stereo a hi-fi stereo recording on it so if that VCR was playing back something it recorded itself or something recorded on another VCR with hi-fi stereo you'd have a little hi-fi indicator show up so you could have a, I, I believe anyway someone correct me if I'm wrong but I believe you could have a stereo V8 a stereo a VHS with a stereo recording that wasn't hi-fi so you'd get the stereo but you wouldn't get the hi-fi uh, you know the hi-fi enhanced fence and so the hi-fi indicator would not light up this doesn't have a hi-fi uh, indicator on the display at all so it says forehead hi-fi stereo I don't know if it actually has any uh, hi-fi enhancements or what I don't know evidently this cassette has an SLP recording on it as indicated there and uh, yeah anyway I've already done some thorough comparisons between this VCR and I used my Citizen uh, there to compare to and uh, what I did was I found a DVD a DVD that didn't have copy protection on it and I, I put it in a DVD player and I connected the DVD player to the VCR through the uh, composite input and I recorded a bit of the DVD then I took the tape put it in the Citizen hooked the DVD player to the Citizen and recorded the same part of that DVD to the next part of the tape and then I played back each recording in their own respective VCRs I played it back to this digital 8 camcorder transferred it to the computer and then put it in my video editor so I could get a side-by-side -side look at how each of these VCRs uh, play back their own recordings and the results are um, as for video quality there is a very very minor improvement with this VCR not as much as I would have hoped, but it is better, nonetheless. I imagine a, a really nice Panasonic or something would produce more stark results, but uh, there is a minor improvement over this forehead VCR, over the two-head Citizen. Um, as for audio quality, um, first what I did was, so I could have a more direct comparison of the quality itself, I mixed the audio from this VCR down to mono so I could directly compare it with the mono citizen and uh, quality sounded about the same they sound about identical but when you actually listen to the actual stereo sound that this VCR records it is a very stark difference um, what a difference that just one extra channel makes the audio sound so much higher fidelity so even though the video quality isn't a huge improvement over that VCR the audio quality is absolutely it's it's amazingly uh, improved so yeah I think I found a keeper VCR here uh, is the qu recording quality as good as if I found a Japanese made Panasonic on eBay probably not but it's better than what I have now and uh, it was cheap and uh, it works just fine and uh, yeah I'm very content with this VCR I think this will be a keeper and I think it'll replace my two other VCRs for uh, everything I do. So I will be using this VCR for the remainder of the digitization of all of those tapes down there that I have to record for CPQ 5360, as well as my next project, which is these tapes, which I recorded on my camcorder in my childhood, and I want to go through those someday and digitize the content from those. And I will do that through this VCR. So, uh, we will press stop, and you don't get any noise because, of course, the, uh, the quick, quick start system keeps the tape wrapped around the head, so I press play, stop, play, there's, uh, there's no, uh, there's, there's nothing mechanical it has to do, it just has to either rotate the tape or stop rotating the tape, and, and yeah, the head, the head is still rotating with the tape stopped. That's another reason I don't like the uh, quick start system. It, it just introduces unnecessary um, wear on the tape. But pretty much all modern VCRs have it, so whatever. 
Uh, we can fast forward. So it starts off slowly for a while. Then it changes the mechanism and uh, it does it quickly and it'll speed up. Stop. We can rewind. Anyway, um, I think that's enough blabbing about this thing. Uh, we'll open it up and take a look inside. Two Phillips screws here and two right here. And here's the inside. Nothing special, pretty, uh, pretty usual modern VCR construction. A single circuit board with the transport plopped on top. Switching power supply. Plastic parts everywhere, yada yada yada. But uh, it's working just fine. I did give this thing a little bit of TLC. I put some, uh, a little bit of white lithium grease on those, uh, on those plastic slots right there. And uh, there was there was no grease at all on any of the uh, gears, which I found quite odd. So uh, I put a little bit on uh, this these uh, gears here and those down there, just a little bit, because I'm not sure if they should actually have any or not. But uh, yeah, right there, you can actually see quite a bit right there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, that's the loading motor right there. So it was slipping on that belt because that bottom wheel right there was not turning. The mechanism must not have moved in a long time. It was basically froze up a little bit. So uh, we can put in our tape. And you can see it immediately loads the tape even though it's not playing and uh, I can play. Oh, another nice thing about this VCR, and the Citizen is the same way, you have dual speed Q and review. So if I press uh, Q once, I'll do it from here. If I press it once, there you can see. And if I press it again, it goes even faster. Love that feature. And uh, you can see the timer there too. So there's the slower speed and the faster speed. And if I stop, Keeps the tape around the head if I rewind. You can see it keeps the tape around the head. Not a fan of that, but whatever. Hey look, a date. 9th of April, 1998. And you can see this is the motor that handles all the loading operations. And uh, we will eject. And there we go. So there's a little look at the uh, inside there. If we take a look at the head drum, I see one, two, three, four heads. All accounted for. And uh, I actually didn't even have to clean the head drum. I, the first tape I ever stuck in this thing was my cleaning cassette. But the instant it started playing, the picture was already clear. It was already perfect. Cool. So uh, I'll put this thing back together. What I'll do is, we're, we're going to do my usual VCR test. You guys have seen it before. I'm going to connect the camcorder to the input and record the video from this camcorder onto VHS. I'm then going to uh, connect the camcorder to the output and play back the VHS recording to Digital 8 and uh, ultimately to the computer so you'll see what this thing's own recordings look like I'll use this Polaroid tape I don't know its history but I do know it is a fine working tape live on VHS hopefully it's recording I have no way of telling but uh, I am I am attached via this electronic umbilical and uh, doesn't give the time when it's recording, it just says wreck. You can see we have a little clock symbol there. 
OTR, that'd be for the uh, OTR recording. That little clock symbol though, I wonder if that shows up when uh, when it's on the clock. Oh, maybe when there's a timer set, that's probably what it means. And, uh, APM, not sure what that is, but it looks like probably every indicator on this uh, display is used. Uh, here it is, and here's this place, which you guys haven't seen in a while. This is being filmed on September 2nd, during my vacation home. Not much has changed, everything's, every square inch of this room's just junk as usual. So of course we are recording in SP, I cannot test LP or SLP, but uh, here's what it looks like, anyhow. Um, next what I'm going to show is I, oh the recording I made from that DVD I talked about, I'll show that. And I also did a recording from television, straight from our high definition satellite receiver. So I'll show you the DVD first, and then the TV recording, and then we'll come back. All right, thank you, Jason and Amanda. And now for this Tuesday, September 1st, live and local, this is CTV News at 6. Tonight, still running on empty, Nova Scotia's fuel drought continues. We've ran out of uh, gas twice now since, uh, since uh, Friday night. We had fuel delivered um, Monday morning, and we ran out of fuel yesterday at 3 o'clock. Ships start quietly. Cutting steel without public fanfare. Today is a very exciting day for Irving, the Navy, and the country. And showdown over schools. Defiant parents promise to keep their schools open. They are, I think, profoundly disappointed, would be fair to say, at the decision of the government to attempt to evade accountability under the law. Live from our Maritime News Center, this is CTV News. Here is Steve Murphy. Good evening, everyone. We're back at the gas pumps first off tonight, and we're... Well, there you go. Um, yeah, as you can see, it uh, looks pretty good, and it sounds excellent, that stereo sound. How's it compared to that Panasonic VCR I got last summer? I don't know. I haven't bothered to uh, watch back the video I uploaded on that unit. But, uh, yeah, this VCR works great, and uh, I'm glad I found it. It's great to have a four-head stereo VCR, even if the four heads doesn't uh, have a huge improvement over uh, the two-head unit. But uh, the stereo sound alone, huge improvement. So I plan on using this VCR to uh, to do all the VHS stuff I still have to do, have to do someday when I find the time to do so. That stuff for CPQ 5360, and someday I want to go through all those tapes that I recorded as a kid. When I do that, you know, once I weed it down to the stuff that I actually really want to keep, I'll probably upload some of it on uh, on YouTube someday. Let you guys have a look at it. That'd be pretty cool. Have a look back at my uh, my childhood through, uh, through my own camcorder way back in the day. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, this VCR is a keeper, I think. It just it it's it's been working perfectly so far as I've tested it. And uh, the only thing I gotta do is I need to get a remote. And I I found tons of websites online that at least used to sell replacement remotes for this particular VCR, but all of them said sold out except for one on the fifth page of Google results. I found a website from a company who still, apparently, according to the site, they still have a remote for this thing in stock. It'll cost me about $15, but uh, I'll keep using this thing. If it continues to work just fine, I'll put that money out 
for uh, for the remote. And uh, this thing will pretty much officially become my main VCR. Now I don't need three VCRs. I'm going to be getting rid of my Citizen. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to sell it on eBay. Um, I doubt it will sell, but if it does, great. If it doesn't, I'll probably just drop it off at a thrift store. As for the Hitachi, or uh, excuse me, the RCA, although it's Hitachi built, um, this still needs a belt kit. I would like to get a belt kit and fix it up. I may still keep it just because it's a vintage VCR from the 80s, so I'd kind of like to keep it around. But uh, certainly it's not going to produce as high quality video as this will, but I may still keep it around. I wouldn't get rid of it right now anyway because it still needs a belt kit. I wouldn't drop it off at a thrift store because no one wants to buy a VCR to find out it needs a belt kit. And uh, I wouldn't throw it away because it's a perfectly good VCR. It just needs a belt kit. So this will stay for now. Citizen's probably going to go one way or another. And uh, this thing hopefully keeps working good and uh, it'll be my, it'll become my main VCR. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Memorex MVR 4046 forehead stereo VCR from 1998. And I will see you guys next time. So let's see if this works. Okay, that's not good. That wasn't a good start. And uh... Oh my goodness. What the... Oh! Did he... Did he include lamps? Holy shoot!